Or thank you for finding out time to once again join us on People's Television. You know, when we went on that break, we told you that we'll be having Shagu show me in the building. We've been running his promo for quite some time, and today we're glad to, you know, house him in our studio right here in the seat of power, talking about Abuja. So from wherever you're watching us from, the 36 states, 56 countries of the world, Shagu Shomi is in the building. Thank you for finding our time to be here today. Thank you very much for it's having It's nice me. having you today. It's a pleasure. I like your <laughs> studio. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, in, in, in a bit, we'll be opening up the phone line so that oh. you can also put your questions through to him. Let's know what the Atiku campaign organization is up to. Let's know what their plans are for Nigerians. And let's know who, at the end of the day, will emerge as the president in 2019. It's going to be really, really interesting. Just less than 102 days to the general elections. We are still counting. All right, let's start from um, your campaign organization. The former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, has come out to say he is um, going to latch on the fact that Nigeria needs to be restructured. Now, the questions coming from the citizens is what exactly is he going to restructure as far as Nigeria is concerned? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to, you know, rearrange that a bit. Mm. His Excellency Atiku Abubakar has said that he's running on about four things. Yeah. Job creation, opening up the economy mm. for growth, bringing Nigerians to be united, and reworking the security situation and taming the demon mm. that has refused to go away. <laughs> and it's been captured under a one-line payoff. Mm. Let's get Nigeria working okay. again. Restructuring which is the part that yeah. you bring to the table, we talk about, everybody talks. It's, mm. it's important. It's become important because year in, year out, for some time now, I think since the days of Obafemi Awolo and the, and the likes, they have always wondered whether it's true federalism, whether it's fiscal federalism, whether it's balkanization of the country, and all of that. And I think of Bakara's an individual has been on this topic since 1995. I think the first time we can see public records of Atiku talking about restructuring mm. was during the constitutional conference of 1994-95 that was inspired by the then head of state, General Bacha. And if you follow Atiku, you will see that you can find a paper trail and a commentary trail of him constantly finding time to say, we need to look at this, we need to look at it, and all of them tied into restructuring. In 2007, when he tried to be president then on the ACM, he, was, he spoke about restructuring a lot. He penned the book afterwards, which is a very big compendium mm -hmm. on issues around the structure of Nigeria and how best to address it in a way that Nigeria can unleash the growth potential of every aspect of Nigeria. So, in the build up to 2019, the restructuring conversation has started again. The difference with how Article 6 restructuring and how most other politicians and politically exposed people see restructuring is that whereas others want to take political capital out of restructuring, and once they get the political capital, they pretend as if they don't even understand the meaning of the word. In Article's case, he has been saying some things that this is what I will do. This is what I hope to do. This is what I wish to do with others that we can get a country that can be unleashed to be able to do growth and all that. Some of the things he will do. His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, former Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, presidential candidate of obviously the most beautiful, the biggest, the most democratic institution in the country, perhaps even in Sub-Saharan Africa, PDP, People's Democratic Party has said that via the cautious use of executive orders, mm. that those things that are on the concurrent list of the government, that means those activities that our constitution allow the federal government to partake in, the state government to partake in, mm. even the local government to partake in if they so desire. His Excellency Atiku Abubakar believes that via an executive order, he can push all of those responsibilities away from the federal government and give it to the state. The state. And let the monies that ordinarily the federal government will be spending doing those activities, let it go to the state. In one swept, one stroke of the pen, 
And by the way, his, his signature is very, is very beautiful. Hmm. One stroke of the pen. <laughs> you will have stru structures, the existing administrative structures of the country, which are states and local government, hmm. begin to be able to control more things for themselves. Let me give you some. Those who think and who want who would think and wish this country to grow have always wondered why is it that we don't have federal money or why, what, why is it that we don't push agriculture a little bit nearer where the land is mm. such that all of the monies we are spending in administering agriculture from the federal we can just push it to the states where they have the land mm. and the local government that, that would have significantly restructured it there are those who also say that how do we go about it that extractive minerals like qualine, like clay, and all of those minerals that are deposited in the ground of different locations of Nigeria, and everybody, everywhere in Nigeria, Nigeria is a blessed land. It's mm. Everywhere under the soil, there's enough. Why is it that we want to administer and give them the licenses and give them the rules of how they can engage from Abuja? Why not just release it as part of the asset of those states that can help them now to grow their economy and generate their own Nigeria wealth. You can do that. To add one more, people have wondered that what is the sense in the federal government insisting that it must have secondary schools dotted in every state with the complicated issues of even managing them, funding them and all that. that so what am I saying to you? I'm saying that some of the things that can be done that can give power to the regions and the states, that can be done easily. And I think we do that. And everybody benefits from it. The north benefits, the south benefits, everybody benefits. There are also those ones that you can't do without going through the process of a constitutional review. For instance, can we in good conscience as Nigerians say to ourselves that our country is now well policed to the extent of the level of criminalities that we see all around and i'm look blame nobody directly i'm just saying could we look at it now and say that oh we have this is good so it means that we must now come to the realization that as nations grow and as their population expand and as the issues that are global comes home and becomes local, you must begin to toy with the idea of a better policing structure that can keep the whole country safe and give us safe spaces mm -hmm. over our heads. To do that, you will be insisting on standing on the same spot and getting killed by the same bullet if you say you are not willing to toy with the idea or create the framework for state and community policing where they want to have them. Okay, very now, quickly. So to do that, yes. you need to work with the legislators and all of that. And yeah. that's exactly what the kinds of things that article will do and a whole lot more. Okay, very quickly, uh, before we delve into security and all of that, you, you're actually talking about the, the, the agricultural sector. This present administration came in on that premise also, saying that they're going to diversify the economy using agriculture as the lead. But as we speak, um, little or... Um, Nothing or little is, is being achieved because um, they've also come out to say, you know, they're having one or two challenges. Now, do, do you think that Atiku Abubakar will be able to bring this to the fore? And don't forget, what gives you that, that impression that he can do it? Um, you know, most times when you are at the hems of affairs, you feel, um, okay, I want to do X, Y, Z. But it also trickles down to the state where you have governors who probably will form a cabal and all of that, hampering some of your very highly placed um, ideas like what we've seen in recent past what what is that what is that instinct that is telling you that this man can deliver all of this to to the nigerian public you see more than anybody else that has been president in nigeria mm. more than anybody else anybody you can go through your history mm. none of them have consistently been wanting to be president and trying to be president as long as atiku has been the first time I think we tried to be president or wished to be president, or at least toyed with the idea of being president, was 1992, the Abiola time. And if you imagine that he would have had a longer period to constantly interrogate the issues around the country 
And by 1999, he was lucky to become vice president. So even that would have given him an opportunity to see some of the difficulties between translating ideas into policies and realities. Mm -hmm. And between 2007 to date, in 2007, we, we, we ran the campaign. 2011, we tried again, 15. And, so you see, Atiku has no excuse. He has no excuse. Mm -hmm. And nobody is going to tolerate any excuse from him. For he has had a long time to think about some of these things. And given the kind of person that he is, he opens himself up to ideas. He consults. He brings in experts, wherever we can find them, Nigerian expert, European expert, wherever, to say, how do we solve this problem? So I believe that he is convinced, the unreasonable doubt, that we cannot insist that the only way to get Nigeria to be able to produce its own food and to unleash its agricultural potentials mm. is to hold them to you know, strong strings of control from the federal. Mm. I believe that the whole idea is to release the hold we have on them a bit mm. so that via their own private public sector processes within their own spaces, they can now begin to look for what is economically in their best interest and what need they do for agriculture. You can then take the money that probably gets siphoned or gets uh, you know, a bit of it stolen and all of that at the federal. You can then move it to the state. So each of the states of Nigeria cannot be in healthy competition with itself because in the first instance, nobody has anybody to blame if they're not doing what they need to do with agriculture in their area. And because there is no favoritism between the way the federal organ is moving around trying to do agri when it doesn't have land, mm. you are going to naturally unleash the potentials of those areas. And for Atiku, conceptually, you must look at what works in other countries that are generating growth. And then you must say that, is there any reason why it cannot work here? And if you believe it can work here, because really, let's be honest, Nigerians are the most ingenious, some of the most brilliant people on planet Earth. All that has been, you know, slowing down our growth is perhaps even this, our lack of courage to run a federation that works for everybody and keeps everybody involved. Mm -hmm. So you can take it to the bank. Atiku will not make excuses. Atiku will not feel a buster over the issues. He's going to go there, attack them one by one. You know why? Mm. Because the fourth industrial revolution has started. And great nations are already doing some things. Some of the not so great nations before are becoming great again. Financial inclusion is taking place all over. So Nigeria needs to get his act right. And you need an article to come and help do that. Hmm. Now, let's, let's move, let's take it a little bit further. Okay. Uh, the, the, the opposition has actually come out to say that. Um, he has nothing good to offer. You know, you can go on and on and on. We, we, I saw, you know, a tweet by, um, 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 by Keamo saying that um, everything that they did during their, their, their regime was just to siphon money and all of that. And there is also a video, you know, on, on social media where the former vice president was um, alleged to have said that while they were in power, you know, a lot of money went down, you know, um, you know trying to... Trying to um, to improve power supply, but they did not do much, you know, and they did not really achieve what they plan to achieve and all of that. And when good luck, Jonathan came, a lot of a lot of stories. A lot of people have also come out to say the video was doctored. What is your take on this? Is Atiku the man to beat? You see, because we are now in the democracy, mm. and we pray that we will remain in democracy forever, we are going to be having elections every four, four years. We must elevate the conversation around election period mm. to purely issues. Because if we do not do that, we are going to make the entire political space toxic mm. and good people will come. I have signed up on instruction of His Excellency Atiku Abaka mm. to a creed that says that these 2019 elections we are not going to engage in excessive shaming of people, telling lies, or just being rude, or just propaganda. No. 
we have signed up to an issue-based campaign where we are going to be saying to Nigerians, this is what we wish to do and this is how we hope to go about it. And you don't care now, if there's a smear campaign? If the APC yeah. insists on sitting down on a smear campaign, occasionally, as human beings, and since I have the responsibility of being spokesman, of course I'll give them according to how they have brought it and probably more. But it will not be that we will be the one going in that direction because, first of all, we don't think it's good, we don't think it's ethical, and we don't think it speaks to the issues. Mm. Now, the difference between the vice president's office and the president's office in our own kind of federation, especially at the beginning of this democratic journey of 1999, is like the difference between the principal of a school and a class captain. Mm. All of the ideas that the vice president can have, especially in 1999, including when Atiku and Obasanjo were there, all of the ideas that the vice president can have, they are always subject to the fact that first, he has to convince his boss, the president. Secondly, his boss has to give approval and give vent to it. Thirdly, all the other organs that are supposed to make these things work must buy into it. For the quasi powers or influence of a president does not exist with a vice president. Mm. If a vice president wants to do one thing in the presidential system, or maybe if he's not careful, he, he may have himself coming at a different position with the president. Mm. And it is the president's stable that the box stops. And so he has power. So whatever we were not able to achieve between the presidency and vice presidency of Atiku and Obasanjo, it does not inhibit or even determine what Atiku can achieve as president. Because he has also had the opportunity of being the, you know, next to the president, second in command, or spare tire, or vice president, or the man that can be given the responsibility, or responsibility can be taken from him. Atiku understands what it means for a president not to buy into good ideas that can work. Atiku understands what it means for a president to be obstinate on his views in spite of better logic on the table. So you can take it to the bank that Atiku is going to be a far better president than most of them. If you have not been, if you have not served before, you wouldn't even appreciate it when you have been served. Because Atiku has served, he, or he will more than likely appreciate it when he's been served. Because Atiku has also come up with a lot of ideas that were probably not taken based on the decisions at that time. Mm -hmm. Atiku understands what it means not to take decisions that can be in the greater interest of everybody. Take the power that you are talking about. When you listen to some aspect of that video before they doctored it, of course, you know, APC and their propaganda, you will, you will, if you, are, you, will, you will almost feel some pain in Atiku. And that pain is born out of the fact that Perhaps he's remembering what could have been if only they had allowed it. Mm. And perhaps he's now thinking that there was no reason for us not to have solved this problem. But he stopped short, being the statement that he is, mm. to start pointing, accusing finger, and blaming people, and say they, they, they did it like yesterday, like you have the president of the of the office doing. Mm. Look, the business of leadership of a nation like Africa, like Nigeria and Africa, is such that, yes... It's like a man driving a car. The windscreen is very big, so you can see the front. The rear view mirror is a little bit smaller, that you can look at the back occasionally. Mm. But nobody can be going anywhere fast in nation building if he insists that this is how he's going to drive his car. You will, you, you will take what, is, what has been done before. Mm. You won't go up and down the place for four or five years making excuses. Mm. You will note what you need to change. You will do what you need to do, and you will get to work. People and history is a good judge of knowing where you go, where you took the nation and where you took it to. So if you become the president, or when Atiku becomes the president, if I, and I trust him anyway, I trust him. He can never be like that. If he decides to be like the occupiers of the seat now, who on every occasion will say, ah, this is what happened last week, this is what happened two years ago, this is what happened three years ago, then he will fall into the same trap like they have fallen. But I believe that we all learn from ourselves. Governance is a continuum. Mm. Some of the errors of the past will be avoided in the future. Some of the errors of today will be avoided in 
tomorrow. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how it is. Okay. Now let's move. Let's move a bit further because we're going to touch every aspect. But wait. okay, let's move to the educational um, sector. Mm -hmm. uh, the vice president is one person that has invested so much in education, um, having established the American University right here in Nigeria, you know, resident in Yola, the Adama State capital. The question on the lips of Nigerians is the fact that how many people can actually afford to attend that university, looking at the high cost of, of tuition fee, looking at the high cost of, of hostel accommodation, looking at the high cost of probably you know all other um, apparatus put together okay. in, in in that particular okay. place if actually he wants to rule this country should that be the norm okay thank you good question yeah. a bit annoying but good if you look at all the nations of the world you will never find any developed nation that does not have different quality of education across the instructor some, some of the schools are called Ivy Leagues, where you have Harvard, you have Yale, you have Cambridge, you have Oxford. In those same institute areas, you have schools, universities, that are not any less better than the Yales of this world, but are probably cheaper. So, a nation like ours hmm. must have a genre of these options. That you have an after American university, which is an American standard university in Nigeria, is a plus to Nigeria. It's like saying you have brought a, a, a bit of Harvard to be domiciled here. That does not mean that if Atiku is president, he's going to make all the schools in Nigeria become as expensive as after university. How and why? Private universities are private universities. The visioners of private universities have a reason for creating it. And they have an ambience they want to generate, they want to live there. Mm. There is a standard they want the people to enjoy. Mm. They want to probably even prevent parents from running okay. all the way to UK and America. Sorry, we, we have to come back to this question. I think we have a caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Oh, caller already? Yes. Hello, good morning. Hello. Uh, Yes? Yeah, good morning. What's your name and where are you calling us from, please? My name is Adam. Where I'm you... coming from VI. From VI? Yes. All right, wow. that's Lagos. Go ahead with your question, please. Okay. Uh, you're talking about uh, Achievement 2019. Yes. Uh, Achievement. Go ahead. Uh, my question is that uh, look at uh, Osibanjo, mm. the vice president coming from Lagos, and it's less than four years. Look at the development going on in Lagos. Yes, it's the vice president, but Atiku, he came from my side, over, and from that side also. Mm. But he did vice president for eight years for us, and our side, though, every road lead to Ademoa, every road all. You cannot enter into it, but you have to be careful with your car right now. I came from there. And he did not pay me for eight years. So I wonder, look at uh, the university we are having for a job's own. We cannot enter. None of us can even go closer to the gate. Only the children of the governors, the ministers, and the former government, former ministers, the areas can afford. So, uh, uh, I, I, I'm from that side, but I cannot put at one thing which Atiku has done for us, for his vice president, vice president for eight years. So, uh, I wonder, I'm surprised at this. I don't, I don't think, even now, he won't be himself if he is not taken. But human being is about to change. I don't know whether he has changed, but if it's still Atiku, I don't think something good will come from him. Thank you very much. All right, um, Adams, hello. Are you still there? Hey, hey, yes, I'm All there. right, I, I want to ask you, with your submission now, do you think Atiku's dream to rule this country will crash again? I don't think uh, uh, it will be hard. <laughs> All right, Adams, well, let's not Ad, Ad, you. Adams, Adams, <laughs> Adams, let me, uh, let me try and say to you, thank you very much for yeah. calling. Yeah. It is the right of Nigerians mm. to hold their views. We cannot Definitely. begrudge them that. Definitely. You see, Atiku Abubakar 
sees himself as a pan-Nigerian leader. It is excessive cronism to think that once your son is in office, mm. all things must be concentrated in your area. No, that's not how the country is meant to be governed. Mm. That's not how to administer the country. The responsibilities that of doing state roads and all of that, they are domiciled in the governors of the states and all of that. And some of it are the federal government. Mm. The federal government runs a structure. There are federal ministers for works and housing and all of those areas. As vice president, his duty is to coordinate the economy. You, you, and in that co coordination of the economy, yes. he did fantastically well. All right. you, and you personally for Adamawa, okay. Atiku Abubakar is the single largest employer of labor in Adamawa okay. after the government. Okay, you might, All you of might have that to up there. is to help them All right. in Adamawa. Hello, we have another call on the line. Hello, Shehu. Yes, please. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution. You are calling from Adamawa, right? Uh, from Adamawa, from Mubi. Adamawa. All right, Mubi. Go ahead, Shehu. Yes. Um, you see, I uh, just listened to the last call. Yeah. And uh, I am surprised because uh, Atiku Abubakar has developed the development you can see in Yola Town. I've been <coughs> at the one set up by Atiku Abubakar. Scooter TV, the water company, and the university. I don't understand where he's coming from. I'm not a supporter of Atiku Abubakar. I don't ask, I, but I can see that he has elevated Adamawa so much. Mm. Thank you. All right. Shehu, um, are you still there? Hello. Hello, Shehu. Shehu, right, Shehu is gone. Thank you, yeah. Shehu. I was beginning to think that the, the, the citizens of Adamawa. Mm. The men of the proud heritage of Adama, mm. that probably for some reason or the other, they are not able to appreciate what their leader is doing for them. Mm. Some of these businesses that Atiku puts in Adamawa, he puts them in Adamawa purely and solely to oh, get simple. jobs for them and to create a new value system there. Very some cool. of these businesses may have even done better if they have been put in Abuja, Lagos, or some other location. Mm. It is the heart of a leader trying to pull his people out of poverty that makes a leader put so much there. Some of those investments are even being supported mm. just for the singular purposes of turning around Adama. There is no location in the Northeast today that has more flights going in there than Adamawa. And these are all down to development. Mm. Leaders who want to develop their areas yeah. come up with conceptual framework mm. of how to do it. Okay. Not right. Sorry to sorry to cut you short. We have another call on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, uh, good morning, Suleiman. Good morning. Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution from Kogi. Wow. Suleiman, are you there? Good yeah, good morning. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Turn down the volume of your yeah, business. Yeah, from local job. Go ahead. Yeah. Suleiman, turn down okay. the volume of your TV set completely. Okay. Uh, completely. Uh, We're having a whole back. I come up with uh, an agenda like that. I do. I have the seven point agenda. Okay. 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 I think we should come back. I think we should come up. We have a seven point agenda. Mm. That agenda will be the I think that would be the best way because this government is directionless, and that is the reason why we are where we are. If particular agenda is not the way of going, I would not continue. But an agenda would drive Nigeria to a point that every other uh, the, uh, sector of our lives will be touched. Okay. All right, Suleiman, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you very All much, Suleiman. You have asked a very intel yeah. intelligent and important question. Okay. In a couple of days' time, mm. sometimes just about the immediately they blow the whistle and open the yeah, campaign. On the 18th. His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, mm. Vice President, I like to say that a lot, presidential candidate of the PDP, will be unveiling his policy documents. Mm. And within that public unveiling of that document, all of these things will be captured how he wants to go about it, what he wants to do with the sectorals of the country, his vision for Nigeria, the actions that he wants to take, his concept around how to manage the oil and gas, all of it will be there. And we will lay it there on the table. 
that any man who sees it may be able to run with it. So that will happen. Mm. There's a timetable that we follow. Yeah. Except for the fact that you have invited us normally. <laughs> sure. You know, the team will be ready. <laughs> and Nigerians will be, will be, will be happy. All right, we we have will Daniel. not be disappointed. All right. We have Daniel from Adamawa State. Hello, Daniel. Yes, Adamawa <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Yeah, Hello. Daniel. Good morning. Uh, go ahead with your contribution, please, as quickly as you can. I, I, first and foremost, I would like to commend the speaker. I'm close to you there. I I am a keen listener of um, uh, his campaign policy towards promoting a Chiku. He came to Adama. There was a time he was on TV good. Look, let, let, let's just face the reality. People like a Chiku can invest virtually 80% of his wealth to the people. And let me tell you one thing. Atiku is the second employer of labor in Adamawa State. Hmm. I tell you, if every, every bourgeois in this country will now develop his state, I tell you, it's of redundancy, using students, using youth for, for political bourgeois will not be there. I, those days, yeah, I'm not a strong supporter of Atiku, but now, Based on his agenda on ground, I tell you, to this country, and I, I tell you, you come here, what, you, you will see what will happen, by God's grace, because really behind me, and he's the only person that can take us out of this shackle of unemployment, undirectional policy, government policy, because you can, no, 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 please, if, 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 I think he's the best, thank you very much. Thank you very much for stopping by, Daniel. Thank All you, Daniel. Oh, yeah, this is music to my... You see, when, I, it's correct. I was in Adamawa some times ago, yeah. and I took the opportunity to try and speak to some of these issues. And I was almost coming away with a feeling that, is it that the people of Adamawa are unappreciative of the pain it takes to do some of these things? Mm. But now, listening to people like Daniel and Kwanku, I know that leaders who give to society, society recognizes That's them. Right. I want to thank him for his comment. It's the truth. Mm. I, I, sometimes you will even be wondering. Unless you go there, you won't know. And I think we did not just invest in Adamawa. I think <laughs> last month, I went to Port Harcourt for the convention. Mm. And for one reason or the other, I had to go to one of Atiku's uh, private companies. They're called Intel's and their facility. On my honor, before all Nigerians and before everyone, I literally thought I was in Netherlands. I was like, I said that, who, this man did this, he did this, he did this. Hmm. I thought for a second hmm. that I was in Holland. All right, you, you hold your Holland thought there. We have another call on the line. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, Gretson, how are you today? I'm very, very All right, please go ahead with your contribution fine. quickly. All right. I have been listening through this uh, the conversation about... And uh, for some time, I was I was also aware, or uh, I was alive, or uh, life I was young when the during the tenor, that is the time we when we had uh, like uh, I say under our passengers uh, regime. Now I think uh, I would have a suggestion to just make because I know that this man is. is I know definitely that definitely irrespective of the political terrain, uh, he really And I'm sure I'm assuring him that we are in support. We support him. And uh, I would prefer to sure look at some agencies that are right to look through the uh, and, uh, actually, we work with them very well. So you should look through those agencies which are making applications to him on his um, And one of the representatives from United Farmers Produce and Export Association of Nigeria. And we know that if he will work with us, he will definitely make uh, much impact. He needs to be who work with him. That is my position. Thank you. Thank you very much, Russell, for the lines are really, really, really 
jamming, I can tell you. Sometimes we have calls from as far as the U.S. We have calls from as far as the Cameroon. I'm happy All you brought me here. I'm amazed. <laughs> I didn't even know that you guys are... The lines really? are jamming. You can hear from... You're from, all from over? The calls. Wow. We're all over. I need to come here more often. Yeah, over 52 countries. I think this is the platform countries. now to be talking to Nigerians. <laughs> over 52 countries of the world. Just be trying to do <laughs> Over 52 countries of the world and wow. over our mobile app. The wow. lines wow. are jamming. Wow, this is jamming. impressive. This so is now very maybe impressive. I have to tell the MCR to give you like three, four minutes so that you can respond appropriately before we go back to the calls. Because wow. if I allow the calls, you, will, you are not going to say anything are, here today. These are our people. We want to hear their <laughs> feedback. We want to hear their comments. Okay. We are not here to come and do according to what we think. Okay. We that are is here why, to listen that to That is them. why we are called and from people's listening television. To, I like the name. Yes. By listening to the Nigerians, yeah. you know what their problems are. You can figure out where the issues are. So All right. Um, really and truly, MCR, you, a, you leave the phone lines. It's a pleasure to hear them. to the phone lines. He, he wants to hear even them. Even if they are the angry. Are jamming, even yes, if they yeah. are angry. Yeah. I can tell them sorry. Mm. I can tell them it won't be repeated again in mm. the future. Mm. We are Nigerians. We are a conversational people. Yeah. We have a right to converse around the issues around our country. Okay. An article is a public, a public figure. You can converse about it. And I'm a spokesman. Mm. I am ready to listen to every comment and answer every All right, Shegu is ready to listen. That was, that's why we had to do that promo running for over a week when he confirmed that he will be here today. So, today we are looking at 2019 general elections. Will Atiku's dream crash again? Stop the using the word crash. is here. He he wants to hear let you. me uh, let me answer let me tell you yeah, okay. i i heard you with the way you said you said 2019 there are some will yeah. articles dream crash, crash again it. let me explain something to you that nigerians need to know okay china is one of the great mysteries of the world now mm. that mystery that we are seeing before our eyes that has become such a you know success story yeah it didn't just happen mm. it happened because leadership was passed on sustainably from one leader to the other. Yeah. What Atiku is coming to do in government is to ensure that the ideas of the past leaders and the ideas of where the Nigerian nation is to be in the future come in alignment. Mm. And to do that very, very quickly, so that it can unleash the country that all of us can be proud of. Mm. And then younger people can take over their country and run with it. Mm. That's what Atiku wants to do. So if there's nothing to crash in 2019. 2019, as I have been explaining, is a referendum, if only Nigerians know. It's a referendum between the direction we want to go. If we want to be this, that the way we are now, okay. Mm. But we believe that we should go in another direction so that our country too can, and, and its people can be happier. People can get jobs. Mm. We can open up the economy. We can bring Nigerians from the fringe and unite us. Everybody can be happy. This is not Nigeria. We're not used to killing ourselves. We are Nigerians. We love ourselves. Mm. So something has gone wrong, and Atiku needs to find out what that thing is and remove it mm. so that we can be back to being happy. Mm. We need to secure our country. We cannot wake up every morning and be thinking that every day the only thing we hear is that this, that, this, that. And you know what? Mm. You will observe that I've been very guarded. I have refused to even hit the blame on the present occupiers. It is not necessary. When a nation is in crisis, you need to pull all the goodwill of the people of that nation together mm. to lie behind leadership. But election provides us the opportunity of saying, this is how we will do things. And they can come and say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And if you look at them, they have been unable to articulate one futuristic plan. All they have done is say, they did this in the future, the future. Okay, let, me, let me ask you one question. Okay, ask I have me. a caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, Zion from Katsina. Yes, thank you. This yeah. is Zion from Katsina State. Katsina State, yeah, the good home state of Mr. Mr. President. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead with your contribution. Uh, please, uh, I have a contribution to this issue because I love your program. Thank you very much, Zaya. So I have a contribution to to uh, Atiku Abubakar, the, vice, the former vice president. Mm, okay. So please, what I want to say, that whatever, because people have been looking at Atiku because here in Katsina State, people love that man very well mm. because of someone has made a mistake before. Someone can come and correct it. So, if no matter whatever I think is going to do for my little contribution, please go on to the campaign and put that program for job creation for the youth, for our youth, mm. for our youth, because that is because if we can get that to our youth all corners and try to revise our campaign, all the major companies which they have been and created that job for the, our youth, please assist. The youth corner of the world, any part of the Nigeria, should love those 
they will vote for him because there in Katina, I know how people struggle talking to Atiko and people want to come back to PDP and love you and PDP change their name. So we love PDP and we love Atiko. That is my little contribution. Thank you, Zion, for stopping by all the way from Katsina. I want to thank you from Katsina. Yeah. It's music to my ears. Mm. It's music to the ears of His Excellency Atiku Abubakar. Mm. The things you want in Katsina is what Atiku stands for. Atiku is running on job creation because we cannot be a big nation with young population if they cannot find jobs. Now, how is he going to do all of this? Because this same administration promised no, this, millions this, and millions this, of this job creation. But none is, is existing to speak. Instead of that, over 11 million jobs have been lost in, in, in just a okay, few years. Let now. me explain to you. Okay. Before you can be telling anybody that you want to create jobs for him, you would have created some jobs in your private life. As at the last count, Atiku has created more than 300,000 indirect jobs and more than 50,000 people pick a check every month because of Atiku from his companies. So Atiku knows how to create jobs. Right, we have Hello? a letter from Kaduna. Sorry for cutting you short. Yeah, I make a good morning. Morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution as quickly as you can. Yes, uh, what I don't have much to say, but rather I want to commend you people and the uh, I was happy to to hear that uh, Tiku won the presidential election of the PDP. Okay. And that is why I am back to PDP. Mm. So, Tiku. Mm. Tiku, I believe he will do far, far better than what even good luck has done. He will do the mm. So, even if they don't any Nigerian didn't vote for good luck, uh, Tiku, I and my family will vote for Tiku. Mm. We are for Tiku. Mm. Come on, because this country, if we all really want to unite the country, we have to focus on so many things. The president, <laughs> I doubt they cannot do anything. They are not doing what I have seen as see they are trying to, or they are uniting this country. They are not uniting this country. Look at what they are doing. So I thank Asiku and I ask him to give him the strength. And he's not going to cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Emeka, thank, thank you from your mouth to the ears of God. Mm. And I say a resounding <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Shagun is gradually becoming a pastor. Maybe we'll have a parish for him somewhere. All right. Now, Emeka is, is coming from a different perspective. You know, we're, we're talking about how I think you can actually create jobs for the average Nigerian. Yeah, if you allow me, I will explain it to yes, you. Yes, I, I know. That, that's the area where we're going to before um, we, we had to pick Emeka's call. So you can continue. Let me explain to you. Yeah. The first thing is that you have to have a job creation mindset when you are in the villa to create jobs. Mm. The second is that you have to have the experience of what business people are looking for to help their country grow so that they can then create more jobs and expand. The third thing is that you have to know those ideas that once you bat it and you back it up, is going to give the maximum import of job creation. Let me give you one. You cannot quantify the number of jobs that the pension reform that Atuka Abubaka sat on top and ensured has created in this country. Mm. All the pencoms you see today and the jobs created there up to the last driver is the consequence of reform from Atiku. I don't need to tell you about telecoms. Mm. I don't even need to tell you about the liberalization of the media sector, which has produced licenses for you and, and all the jobs created. That's how to create jobs. Government must first of all understand that its business is policy. All right, we have and its policy must look to think that how do I get right. job creation as a center? All right, and Mutar. Atiku is going to convert Nigeria into a construction hub. All right, and Mutar. that can also create jobs. Muta, thank you for, for being patient with us this morning. Thank you for uh, calling in. Please go ahead with your contribution as quickly as you can. Hello, Muta. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution. Uh, my, my, I was, I was just, uh, what is happening this morning. Thank you. Good morning. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. From the issue of a teacher, I think you Mukta, we have to be a little uh, bit audible so that we can hear you. Yeah. Be uh, audible, I please. Uh, I think you said, good morning. Okay. Good so, so morning. A good answer for that matter. Mm. But people so that people have been there to eight I think they should allow the people to 
it's going to be before any other, I think. You know, but this article coming now is like it's, it's interrupting the government. I think we should allow the president to continue with his speech. Yes, it is to come to another panel. That is my contribution. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mukhtar, for stopping by. I, I, I don't know what, what your reaction is. No, no, no. You see, uh, Mukhtar, thank you for that comment. It's well taken, but let me explain it to you. Mm. The difference between a dictatorship and a democracy or a monarchical system and a democracy is that in a democracy, every four years, people must interrogate the issues and present candidates and try to market the candidate and take the power. Hmm. It does not invalidate the right of the president, the president president to campaign. It does not it does not become exclusively his right also to be available. Hmm. It is the right of the Nigerians to listen to the issues to ask questions, to determine who is going to best serve them mm. and to use their ballot or their, their PVC and their ballot paper and their election to give the authority to who they want so that the people can then get the government they deserve mm. and the government they choose can then serve them according to the mandate. Mm. I think nothing else needs to be added. Okay. Well, we, have, we have another caller on the line. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, what's your name and where are you calling us from, please? My name is Yahya and I'm from Gombe. From Gombe State. All right, go ahead with your contribution. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead, Yahya. Yeah, I want to I want to thank you uh, for this and uh, I want to appreciate the guest seated there. Thank you. In person of uh, the spokesman, Atiku spokesman. Okay. I, I, like, I like his energy and that is what I see in Atiku every day. Mm. Uh, this country has come a long way. And I think what we need at this critical time is a person the like of Achiku. Mm. The zeal, the energy I see him uh, display. Um, we are going past the era of repeating things that we've done in the past. We need to see innovation. Every day I say, if Achiku will replicate just what he did in Adamawa, which will become his jurisdiction by the time he becomes president. I think it would be the better off. I see all this industrial action coming up all the time, and this thing has been doubled upon for almost a year now. I say, what I say is, if these people cannot do it, there is somebody who can do it. The PDP talked about the world pump price to 19 era. I saw another presidential candidate say that it is not possible. I say, if you cannot do it, do not say that it is not possible. I think what people lack is the basic knowledge of governance. And that I see in Atiku critically. Mm. I see him bring about a solution, a complete change in Nigeria. Mm. Honestly, I, I am calling upon everybody. Uh, I and my family will all vote Atiku. Naturally and normally, a prophet, or what do they say, is not uh, a prophet uh, in his domain. Mm. We're not expecting that everybody in Adamawa must appreciate what uh, Atiku has done. But we must not fail the distance, the disparity in powers between a president and a vice president. Mm. I like what the guest said. He said the difference between a president and a vice president is that the president is like a, a, a principal and the vice is just like a, 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 a class, a class captain. <laughs> yes, it is exactly like that. Mm. The, is more like a primary school headmaster and the president is the vice chancellor. Mm. Yes, so I, I think a is a solution, is a change that we really need in Nigeria. Mm. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Yaya, for stopping by all the way from Gombe State. Yeah, yeah, I think I, the yeah, 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 thank you. The way I'm even seeing you now, yeah, yeah, you have to be a politician because I can see the sound of a future governor of Gombe hmm. from the way you are talking. There's clarity in what you say. Hmm. I can see you understand the issues. Hmm. And God bless you. Thank you very much for the good hmm. comment. 
help me to tell other people around you that it's time for Atiku. Mm. Let us go and get Nigeria working again. A very quick one, you know, um, out of what Yaya said, even though it's part of what I reeled out for, for, for um, you know, interaction between the both of us today. Atiku said he's going to, you know, crash down the, the prices of petroleum product to 97 Naira, if that is anything to go by. Is it true that that, that, that was what he no, said? No, no, no. Or well, there's a misconception? Let me, let me, let me, explain, you want to let me explain that area. Okay, so clarify that now. In the business of managing or communicating on behalf of a big cap party like PDP mm. and a huge personality like Atiku, okay, you, you have to be careful to know what you can pin to the candidate okay. and what you must leave for the party. For the party. Okay, the, very, very quickly. Sorry, very quickly. Oh. We have Wale from Osho State. You are not letting us have this conversation anymore. Yes. Uh, all right, Osho, let you me You want hear. to hear from the people. Yes. All right, so that's why we are doing all of this. So, Wale, go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Ali, for joining us. Yeah. Uh, Ali, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, so please, um, you see, uh, the issue is not um, uh, as it was going to crash in 2019. Okay. Uh, if every vote counts, if every vote counts, it is obvious that Atiku is going to win the election. Because everybody cares. Of, you know, there are ways when someone is diverse. Atiku is, is someone, if you look at his track record, set a, a benchmark for good leadership. Even when he, when he took up the mantle in the custom, you know what he did? It is just, it's like serving too much. When you serve a master that he is very corny, a master that is being governed, a, 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 a leader that is giving all aspects of duty to that who is being, who is being maneuvered here and there. I think he is a straightforward man. He's going to do whatever he says he's going to do. He is not good, but we have a pretty young ambassador. And if you look at his first record, and that has spoken for him already. And Nigerian youths are very wise. I is that we should pray that every vote counts. If it does, definitely. It is 100%. There is no doubt about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wale, for stopping by all the way from Ocean State. I know you're happy about that. But tell us about the 97 era crash. Now, like I was explaining to you, yeah. uh, the, the, a, a campaign of this nature will have a lot of people coming, uh, you know, coming up with opinions. Mm. The what you heard there was from the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria via the, our irrepressible National Publicity Secretary. Okay. And I believe he is hopeful that that should be able to happen. Okay. But from the concept of how to run a free market economy, Atiku's position is that yes, the prices can come down, but they must be determined by the forces of demand and supply. And what Atiku will be bringing to the table is transparency in the running of that industry. Atiku has always constantly asked one question, or a bit of the record. He will always say something like, America has more hydrocarbon than Nigeria. How come they don't have a ministry of NMPC? Mm. Do you hear NMPC there? Other nations that are doing very well, like Indonesia, like Brazil and Venezuela, why is it that our own is the only one that we are just pinning everything down, creating the enabling environment for fraud and sleaze and all sorts of underhand dealings? Why don't we allow reforms to get into the sector? the full percent of the petroleum industry bill and all of that, so that we can at least stop seeing the oil and gas as if it's a special commodity. We can treat it like every other commodity. And the prices of demand and supply can work. And we can encourage modular refineries, small, small refineries that can do the job. What I would just say is that Nigerians should be patient. Mm. In a couple of days, time, just on the 18, maybe about maybe a few days, 12 right? days, 13 yes. days, yeah. we're going to do a comprehensive policy unveiling program. And that document will be brought before Nigerians. Mm. And you are going to see line by line what you wish to see in almost all the important sectors. Mm. And anything you wish to see that is not there, we will direct you to a bigger document where you can find it in granular details. Mm. Atiku doesn't want to be president because he wants to come and sit down there and waste his own time and the time of his destiny. Mm. Atiku wants to be president 
because he believes that deep in his vein and his soul, there are things he can do or cause to happen that can make the Nigerian nation transformed. This is not a transformational agenda for joke. This is a transformational agenda to rescue Nigeria and give it the feeling to join the fourth industrial revolution. And then from there, you will see that Nigeria will begin to make progress. Why will anybody be telling you that let's unite the country? Don't you understand that if we don't have unity and we have peace and everybody in Nigeria feels like they are part of Nigeria, don't you understand that it will limit our growth? Maybe there's something a Zamfara man is supposed to contribute to the growth of this Nigeria. When he doesn't feel like a Nigeria, will he contribute it? Maybe there's something that somebody from Aruchuku is supposed to contribute to the growth of Nigeria. If he doesn't feel involved in Nigeria, will he contribute it? Mm. That is the fundamental thing. All Nigerians <laughs> must become united. And to unite Nigeria, you need a united leader. A leader who feels that all Nigerians matter. And that's what I think we is. All right, we have another call on the line. Hello, good morning, Sunday. Sunday from Berlin. Yeah. Hello, Sunday. Hello. Hello, Sunday. Can you hear us? Okay, um, Sunday. You, yeah, you may have to. Yeah, try try us back again. Now let's 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 look at let's look at um, all of this that you've reeled out. Do you think he can accomplish all of this in four years? You see, if you know how how much time four years is in the hands of somebody that wants to do something serious, mm -hmm. you will know that four years is a long time. Four years is a long time in the hands of a leader that is on a journey. It looks like four years is small because the president of the of the seat took a long time out of that four years to be doing nothing. And they claim that the 60 years of the PDP also, listen, they, listen. They also did nothing. It is, it is the, you are here. You are, you are a citizen of Nigeria. Mm. I know how old you were in 1999. You can do the maths. Mm. Don't you remember how this country was in 1999? In 1999, how many television stations did you even have? In 1999, how many people had the telephone? In 1999, how many kilometers of road did you have? In 1999, how many federal investment did you have? In 1999, how many private investment did you have? In 1999, how many cars did you have on your road? In 1999, how many houses did you have in your cities? In 1999, how many shoes did you have on your leg? In 1999, how much could you even eat? In 1999, what was the look of your face? In 1999, what was the, the level of your debt? In 1999, what was the view of the internet? The international community towards your country. In 1999, what was the level of fear in the country? In 1999, what was the level of political inclusion? In 1999, what was the view of advocacy? In 1999, ah, you pretend as if you were not citizens of this country when we took power in 1999. Don't be deceived by them being insisting that every effort that we did to even get them into power, including bring democracy, allow democracy to thrive, and handing over power to them in a clean election, don't be deceiving yourself that they don't know what they did. They know it is in the files. How can a nation that was a pariah nation, who was not even respected by anybody, who cannot even write a, no bank could write a letter of credit and get it respected abroad. How can a nation, we created the FCC, we created IPC, we created the due process, all to manage corruption. But yet corruption tried. Listen, how can you say corruption tried? The administration, the, the administration of Criminal Justice Act, which we are even using to fast track trials, was done by us. What have they done? They claim nothing, they did not see us, see us. Four has gone out of it. So they want us to now spend 16 years waiting for them to be marching on the same spot. Nigerians will be dying. People will be hungry. People will be miserable. We will be the poorest nation in the world. International agencies will say that we are even more corrupt now than we were in 2015. And they will be. Listen, my brother. The rules was I think the president should fire all his spokespersons. <laughs> if he had good media communication managers, they would have understood that Nigerians are not interested in excuses. Okay. Nigerians need their leader to show the way, explain the way, and tell them things All that right. can infuse hope. Right, the singular responsibility of government okay. is to protect life and property and to give the people of that, of that nation the sense of belief that there's something called for the land. All right, very quickly, we have Ezra from Adamawa State. Hello, Ezra, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution as quickly as you can. Yes, please, let me lend my voice to the contribution. Go, go ahead. So far. Uh, I think Atiku emergence as a president of DPP is the best thing that has so far happened to this country. God bless you. I am, I am, I am speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. I am 
to where Atiku is coming from, not because he is my tribal man. At this juncture, Nigeria is divided along religion and line. And Atiku is the best person to put this country back together as one entity. I know him because all the businesses and the institutions he has been operating, you hardly find uh, 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 employing people along religion or tribal lines. He looked for a competent hand. I end as a who manage, manages that business prosper. So if Nigeria wants to come back to its own prosperity line, I think I'm the best candidate. And for you to put that topic, if his one dream will crash, I think it, it, we need to apologize to him. This is the right time to bring a people on board. Thank you very much. All right, thank oh, you yeah, very much. Well, well, I, well I, I, I am a watchdog. I, I yeah, watch you. I also watch the apology. You said you the world crash. He wants to apologize. Well, apologize. I, I'm not going to apologize. Oh, to you, you want to? You demand. You demand. You are not going to apologize to him because if we don't do like that, we are not going to be able to interrogate the process. No, it's not with the use of the word crash. Okay. 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 Okay.
You cannot be insisting that when Atuku was supporting them in 2014 to 2015, he was a clean man, and now that suddenly that he wants to be president, they are bringing up all issues that they have said was a lie before. You see, the jumping from pillar to pole, be saying it is hot and then saying it is cold, be saying it is good and then saying it is bad, is the reason, one of the main reasons why they have to be voted out. Hmm. The APC and their followers have the tendency to be hypocrites. When you are with them, you are good. When you are away from them, you are bad. When you are bad and then you jump ship to their side, you be, this is not how to run a nation. Atiku has never stolen it. He has never had the opportunity. Let me explain for the purpose of our listeners. Hmm. The final approval level for anything done in government is on the hand and the signature of the president for the presidency. Just like it is on the hands for the governor instead of the deputy, just as it's the hand of the chairman instead of the vice. These things that they are making, these allegations that they are making, or these rumors and these annoying comments they make, they only say it because they want to put a big conspiracy over the years of Nigeria and be pointing to a man who is working hard. Mm. The only thing they would have been happy with is maybe if, God forbid, Atiku was, was poor like them, or he had only about 150 cartoons that never gave back, that never increased the number, or he could not also pay his bills. Or he, that's the only thing that would make them happy. Mm. Atiku and the likes of them, Dan Bote, they run on the same fiber. While Aliko is in business and has never come into government, Atiku has just also been carrying some of his energy into politics. It's at, if Atiku and Dan Bote can be making money from business, what is going to stop Atiku too from making money if his businesses are working for him? Atiku works hard. He's always creating new ideas, always creating new value. Some of them are successful, some of them may not be. Just as it is in business. But when you have a few businesses that are doing well and you manage your expenditure, you will be okay. So nobody should be. Atiku has been out of government now for 12 years. Between 2007 to this 12 years. Okay, so what has been sustaining him for those 12 years? Or has he had any has he had any, any chance around your around the government since 12 years? Did you hear they gave him any contract? No. So I'm saying to you that before he came in 19, before they came to government in 1999, Atiku tried to be president in 1992. He was not in government then. And so did he still their money? Look, Nigerians, don't listen to them. Ask them only one important question. You met us in 1995 like this. Rice was X amount of money. We were buying fuel, X amount of money. Kerosene was X amount of money. You promised us that our life is going to be better. Today, we are towards 2019. We ourselves can see by ourselves that our life is worse. You have lost the argument. That's the only way you will force Nigerian leaders to be delivering on their promises. People should not be rewarding any politician who comes into public space, makes promises for development, does not follow and does not make true and does not deliver on those promises. They should reward them. All because right. if you keep rewarding them, mm. you will still have a situation where people will be crying and dying and all that. Right now, they promised, you gave them the mandate, Nigeria should give them the mandate. They've gotten there, you've seen how your life is. More have died, more have been thrown out of job, more is more miserable. Now there's another opportunity in the next couple of weeks for another election, another one round, two days. Go there and do what is responsible. Take a decision. Whatever decision you take is fine by me. But I will beg you, take the right decision for yourself, for your children, and for your future. And that decision is article. Very quickly, the USIP, the United States Institute for Peace, has actually come out a few days ago with a report saying that uh, the incumbent president might likely win the 2019 general elections. What were your reactions when no, you had that? We have that? seen quite a lot of other reports too that said that he's going to lose. Mm. We have seen um, the also of that organized that newspaper had a very strong type blood yeah. in the UK that says he's likely going to lose. Yeah. We have seen the report of uh, HSBC mm. that also says he's going to lose. Yes, yeah. And we have also seen quite a lot of um, um, polls within the country, done online, some done in real line, that says it's going to lose. I think um, for us, what we are after is a clean process, a credible process, a transparent process, a process that meets all the minimum standard of how an election should be managed and organized. And that responsibility falls with INEC. 
And we believe that learning on the job and the curves of many elections, especially some of the staggered elections they've done or Shrey Kitty and some of the other ones they do and co, they should be able to come up with a framework that allows election day to go seamlessly. Mm. Where everybody who has a PVC is able to come and vote and the votes are casted, mm. casted well, the integrity by which the, re the result is transmitted is fine and the winner emerges. Mm. Um, for Nigerians in a, in a democracy, we must know that we will always have this conversation. After Ibatiku wins in 2019, and by 2023 or 2022, some other candidates will also be challenging him. Yeah. And that's how the circle will keep going. So it's part of the reasons why I always say, let's keep it to the issues. Because the circles are too frequent. Mm. And if we're not careful, we'll just make the whole space toxic for nonsense. Mm. So therefore, I want to like still encourage my friends, my colleagues on the other side, members of the APC, the narrative managers of the president, that let's keep it civil. Mm. Let's speak to the issues. If we have a few issues, we we'll raise it, we we'll, we'll deal with it. Let's stay on what's in the best interest of men. Mm. It's a contestation for how Nigeria should develop. And there are more than one side to an argument. Mm. So we can still keep our own lines mm. without necessarily making the, or dividing the country and all that. Where, where, where exactly have our politicians missed it? Because I remember during the 1999 you know, campaigns where Obasanjo and, and the likes were, were, were running Hello? their campaigns. OK, we have a caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Jennifer from Abuja. All right, Jennifer, go ahead with your contribution. Jennifer. Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Okay, Joy, yeah. Please, uh, please turn down the volume of your TV set. The network is not all that friendly where, where you are right now. I like it. Joy, uh, we're very sorry. Please try try and call us back. Just try and call us back. Please, um, we, we had to allow Joy to go because um, the network uh, of our area is not really coming Where did you well. get it wrong? Yeah, where did we get it wrong? Because 1999, during the campaigns, the campaigns was, were based on issues. And along the line, 2007, 2011, and now it's becoming like a smear campaign, you know, name-calling rather than, you know, talking about issues and how to address them. Where did our politicians Let me explain. It? In 1999, it was based on issues. Yes. To some extent, in 2003, it was based on, on issues. issues. Yes. This ugly set of narrative commenced somewhere around 2007, 2011. Mm. And it started by first, when the elections are over, the comments of those who didn't win began to become Hello? charged. Yeah. And slowly but okay. gradually. Yeah, sorry, we have a call on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, what's your name, please, I'm and where are you calling us from? All right, Gabriel. I'm Mr. Gabriel from COVID. All right, go ahead with your contribution. Sir, I, I'm hearing that uh, the, the, the report from the uh, U.S. that uh, Nigeria uh, uh, is going to win. We have heard those reports several times. When Bruno uh, Jonathan uh, was about to contest, they said Nigeria is going to defy. Nigeria is going to, it's not going to hold an election. By and why? Election 50, no problem. All those reports is destruction to Nigeria. We know what we are going to do. Nigeria is going to, is going to vote and vote and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for stopping by. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah I heard it. Him. Period. Period, yeah. That's, that's for Gabriel. So, go ahead. So, like I was trying to explain, yeah, so by the time we got to about 20, post-2011, going towards the 2015 election, yeah. in a desperate desire to really clinch power from the PDP, and they had the right to want to clinch power. Mm. But must still do it desperately. They left, they left off the guards. Mm. They started to delegitimize the government by telling lies. They made excessive promises that were difficult to substantiate. And before we knew it, that ugly set of narrative followed us and they won. It doesn't matter. Now, they have won the election. Between 2015 till date, PDP has been very cautious of that desire to return us back to issues, mm. you will see that we have not created a situation where every five, five minutes we're just abusing them. In actual fact, now that we're even moving towards the election again, 
They're the ones that are insisting that that one is called, this one is called. But not like that. Mm -hmm. When they say these things about us, mm -hmm. you know, we even try to respond in the most cautious manner by saying, ah, no, guys, let's stick to the issue. You know why? Yeah. Because we are far more responsible than them. All right. We know the implication okay. of dividing the country and what can happen to the citizens. Right, and so we are saying, bring Nigeria back. Let us stay on the issues. Mm. What are the issues for us? Mm. I need to say that quickly. Okay. The issues for Atukabaka and this campaign is how do we create jobs? We know we know how to create jobs. We create jobs for Nigerians and these people. The issue is how do we grow the economy? So that it can generate more income for Nigerians and everybody, we will open up under a massive opportunity creation template, bringing private sector to do quite a lot of creative things that Nigerians are going to be happy. Hmm. We know that Nigeria needs to be united. We're going to embark on the most uniting framework that brings all Nigerians to the center, back to the table, to discuss their issues. That's where you see restructuring is heavy for us. Mm. We know that Nigeria needs to be secure. We're going to review comprehensively everything around security in the country and come up with a framework that allows everybody to be secure in the country, wherever you are, and give the power to secure the lives of their people, bring it a little bit nearer where the activity is taking place. Mm. These are the things that we're interested in. And obviously, we want to let us get Nigeria working again. Any other thing outside our own issues is a distraction. They have a right for, to bring their own issues. But if they are bringing their issues, they can, I can even help them craft their issues if they want, if they pay me. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. This is what we want. You say, oh, this, this one is this, this one is You can't run a nation like that. Nigeria is a nation of one and maybe 200 million yeah. vibrant people in the diaspora everywhere. You cannot be the number one man in the country and your responsibility will be to be shaming the country everywhere you go. You can't run the country like that. Mm. Niger nobody's, we, if we call ourselves terrible names, then all our neighbors who are even doing worse things than us will now begin to feel they have a right to insult us. National pride does not give the leader the right to be making everybody in the country look bad. What a leader can do is to show a framework of how he wants people to change by changing himself and by punishing people that have done something wrong. But not that you make generalized comments like, I can say all Nigerians are lazy. Is that reality? What about the man that is pushing the kidnapping? Would you call him a lazy youth? Or you say, all the women in Nigeria go to the other What's the meaning of that? Or you say, somebody will tell you, now, how can the president tell me, another country's president tell me, Nigeria is fantastic corrupt, and I will take it. I will immediately tell him that, I beg your pardon, that's not what we see. What we see is that your people are the ones that corrupt my people. Mm -hmm. That's how leaders talk. So that everybody will know that, ah, this president, though, he's not interested in a situation where you just come and have heaping blames on these people, making them feel bad and making them feel dehuman. Mm -hmm. I think we will never do that. All right, we have a caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, what's your name and where are you calling us from, please? My name is Stephen. I'm calling from... You're calling from where? Zaria. From Zaria. Zaria. Okay, go ahead with your yes. contribution. Yeah. I, I saw the, that Will Atiku dream crash again. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, this dream will not crash. I mean... We are hoping he's coming to save the street. Mm -hmm. God's grace, 2019, we are voting him. Right. Because he has a good agenda of peace for Nigeria. Mm. We are voting Article 2019. Openly, secretly, we are going to pay for him. <laughs> we have saw his manifesto. He is acceptable to this world and the world to come. Mm. We are going to vote for him. He will never, never crash. God is going to support him. AJ will support him. Lanet will support him. Poor people will support him. He have suffered under this government. Blood has flowed without any voice of compensation. In fact, we are going to vote at Tiko. His dream will never, never crash. If anybody has that thought, he is on their own. That's their own call. Man is coming. He is sent by God. That is my own opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for stopping by all the way from Zaria. Did I not advise you that that thing that you are calling crash class is going to put you in trouble? <laughs> now the Nigerians are speaking to you. Maybe you need a second apology to me. <laughs> I don't owe you an apology. How can you say our dream because you can apologize to me? No, I don't owe you an apology. Now let's let's move very quickly. Um, how do you think 
he can fight corruption because um, from what this with what, what this administration is hampering on is the fact that they are coming on board to fight corruption to a standstill. That is the most irresponsible, lazy comment I've ever had in a whole year. So how will Atiku do anything? No, the, well, I, I'm, I'm talking to you now. Yes. You have made a very lazy comment. Hmm. And I even bother that for a journalist is bordering on irresponsibility. <laughs> Let me explain it to you. For you to say they are fighting corruption and making progress with it, mm. you need to first of all look at the corruption allegations around them. There are issues around the NNPC. There are issues around the Office of the National Security Advisor. There are, sorry, um, uh, Chief of Chief Staff. Of staff yeah. There are issues around even the Office of the First Lady and somebody stealing our money. There are issues everywhere. There are issues with Maina. There, is, there are issues with the man that was in charge of the SSD before. There are issues with people that are brought in from pension. There are issues with how they are paying subsidy. These are all huge, big issues of corruption. There are issues with their inability to obey the rule of law. These are corruption. So when you say they are fighting corruption, as a journalist, I expect you to say something like, they are claiming. That was exactly what I the said. The word is claiming. Yes. That, they are, that somebody is claiming something does not necessarily mean it's the truth. Okay. How would we do it? Tell that caller to hold on. Let me explain okay. how we do it for you. Okay, I, I would have preferred you to hold on. So I will give you before. more time than the caller. I have George from Gombe. Hello, George. Hello, George. Hello, Hello George. George. Okay, I think George, George is still putting no, his thoughts no, together. No. So how are we going to fight that? First of all, how, how, what have we done in the past mm. that showed that we wanted to fight it? We created EFCC. That EFCC, the, except you want to say that it is only the man that is there now that has ever worked, which would be unfair to all of the other senior officers that have handled that organization, including Lou Ribadu. Mm. So they must have been fighting this menace. We created ICPC. We created and also modified the Administration of Criminal Justice and we, called, we brought it into fusion. We created the procurement, we did the procurement act to make sure that people cannot just be, you know, one agency will buy paper for one naira, another one will say he bought the same paper for ten naira. We did that. We did the pension reform to make sure that the pensions of people is not lost in the belly of snakes. We did that. And the directive principle of that of the PDP government was such that. We were not doing friend versus foe. Most of the people that found themselves in trouble in this country were PDP people under PDP government. Once the allegation is established, they take them to court. Once the court says they are guilty, they are guilty. People have left their offices because of just mere allegations. And yet, you now come now and say that those who we hear no evil around themselves, see no evils around their family, understand no evil around their cronies and they are claiming to be fighting corruption. They like the sound of the word, but they do not know the meaning of fighting corruption. The worst that they've even done recently now, because they like to play to the gallery. Anybody who says the general has not gone to secondary school is mischievous. But did they have to go and now start put the whole country and themselves and Waek in a difficult situation where we are now not sure what has happened? Mm. Is it not just because they like to play to the gallery? Couldn't they have maintain that having gone to this, 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 couldn't they have maintained their position pre-2015? Look at what they have cost us now. The Gwaiq in Ghana is writing a different narrative. The ones in Nigeria cannot completely take ownership. Mm. The whole, why, why are they, they, are, they are embarrassing us. Nobody in his true honest sense can say somebody is a general in the army and then you are, you know, you are, come on. Mm. Nations are developed along their own developmental trajectory. Mm. The way a nation develops, every nation has its history. I'm not sure that if the leaders of the American nations of the British nation in the early days of their own democracy are even as qualified as our own leaders, but why do they have to go and embarrass us? Hmm. These are all the things. You see, government must fight corruption by insisting that it will not tolerate it wherever they find it. All right. And government must continually improve the instrument by which you are fighting corruption. Hmm. You need to fund them better. You need to make sure that their investigative arms are stronger. All right, very you need quickly, to make sure that the enforcement arms are stronger. Valentine you, from a boy state. Valentine, Good morning. Valentine, how are you? Hello, Valentine. Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, good morning. Go ahead with your contribution quickly. Yes, yes. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm on the line. Good morning. Yeah, go ahead. Please turn down the volume of your TV set completely so that we'll have a seamless oh, conversation. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. 
Hey. All right, Valentine, go ahead. Okay, my contribution. This uh, perspective, uh, I want to change the change the topic. Okay. The topic should be Atiku win. What can he do? I know by the grace of God that Atiku has already won the election. So we should change it. If Atiku win, what will he do for us? Because we have suffered enough. Please apologize for Nigeria for the topic of today. If Atiku win, because he has already won the election. All right. Thank you very much, Valentine, for your contribution. But um, what okay. we're doing is a process. Will his from dream the, crash first? If not, if he wins, what will he do? That's the next line uh -huh. of action. So you don't, you don't, uh -huh. just follow us. It's uh -huh. a trend. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. an evolving uh -huh. trend. So, uh -huh. and Shao uh -huh. will always be on the show to tell us what uh -huh. he will do. But today we want to know, will his dream crash again? And that's why we are getting all of these responses from you. My friend, it's a process. Yeah, my friend and brother. It's a process. Broadcasting is a process. From the of many witnesses. <laughs> Yes. The truth is validated. Maybe partially. So maybe you should again, in good, in good <laughs> I, conscience, I tell me that you are sorry. <laughs> I owe nobody an apology. I owe oh, nobody an apology. You are, no, you have to show show is you are leader because, here. Yeah, it's an evolving, it's an evolving program. Right, okay. You are we, going to be on this program change as, as, as often you, as you when want to come on the show. When are you going to come and discuss will Buhari's second time agenda crash? Next week, you are okay. on the show. Uh, no, there's no me. I'll bring them to come and... Uh, no, I'll I, bring you and one of the other person can, on oh, the show. I, at this level that I am now, where I reach now, is only the top lecture that can come. We had a live Mohammed. Yeah. If you cannot find live Mohammed, I'll get live Mohammed. I can mistakenly accept additional like that. Okay. Otherwise, any other person is beneath me He's now. Beneath, yeah, sure. Now, president versus president. So don't Definitely. bring me one, no, 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 one no, no. rookie. I'll okay. bring live Mohammed. Hey, or let me, let me, me, let me, or Garba Shew. Garba, what do Garba want to talk? <laughs> okay, you bring Garba. I'll, I'll bring Garba. I'll be using him to do Miss Smith. <laughs> I'll be chewing him. Anyway, that's just to make it interesting for yeah, us. Listen. Very true. Yeah. We are not going to ever be a nation that will never have issues around corruption. Mm. The nature of humans is to, you know, to be corrupt and, and take that, things yeah. that don't belong we'll to them. See. The duty of government is to put institutions in place mm. that will prevent it. And when you see infraction, mm. what in fact, if you punish the infraction of your friends, I tell you, your enemies will run. Hmm. Because if, the, if your friends, if the people see that your friend did an infraction and you tolerated it not, you used him as a victim and you used him to be a scapegoat, hmm. then the ones that are not your friend will take it easy because they know that, hey, this man that did this to his, his friend. friend. What you, but you know, when you are running the whole process as though the, a whole nation will only produce only one man, that has the right to claim that he has integrity. Yeah. You have already destroyed the nation. All right, we have Stephen from Mina. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Steve. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution quickly. Uh, my contribution this morning is the APC government has crashed completely. Hmm. And the only person that will reverse Nigeria back is Atiku Abubakar. So we are waiting for Atiku and Nigeria will come back in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you very much for stopping by, Stephen, all the way from Mina. Now, ab ab apart from corruption, let's also look at insecurity and security. How is it going to fare any better? Because okay. uh, during, the last, during the last administration, elections were postponed because of the activities of Boko Haram. And at the end of the day, elections you know, were held. The 2019 general election is just around the corner. We have issues of headsmen. We have invasions by Boko Haram, you know, on communities, on Lishan terror and all of that. What will Atiku do differently, you know, if at the end of the day, his dream comes to reality and not crash? Thank you very much. I like the way you couch it. Let me try and expound some quick things that Atiku will hope to do. Okay. One of the reasons why you have a lot of challenge with managing the security is because of what you call cross-border issues. Mm -hmm. These issues have to do with our borders. How do people come in? How do people go out? The movements in and out of small arms, which are the ammunition they use. Mm. Atiku having been a very senior custom officer, sometimes having responsibility for the whole of the northern borders, having also worked at the semi border, the Lagos ports and all that, I believe he's able to bring that experience to bear to tighten up how things move in and out of our borders to ensure that we can manage that. That's number one. 
And if we can manage that, then we can then begin to look at how to manage the ones that are on the internal. The other thing is that I believe that Atiku is persuaded that time has come now where Nigerians and all Nigerians and friends of Nigerians that reside within Nigeria must be registered to a well-captured biometric identification system that also have a valid address. The implication of that is that if somebody commits a crime, we can go to the system and look at him and look for his house easily without running up and down. I also believe that Atiku is of the opinion that being a full animal himself, that something has gone wrong with the relationship between the headsmen and the farmers. And that that relationship, ordinarily, we need to look for it at the base of the pyramid where the traditional rulers of the small, small alcalis of the villages and all that, and the owners of the headsmen, of the animals, can now begin to understand that government is not going to tolerate people killing themselves for whatever. Why we will not tolerate cattle rustling, we would also not tolerate headsmen killing people. And that we're not going to allow it to assume a coloration other than crime. And that criminality will be treated as criminality. Murder will be treated as murder. It will not have any other name. Mm. Atiku also believes that it is time now for us to really look at our policing and security architecture mm. and ask ourselves, what do we need to do to improve it? And some of the things that Atiku will do very quickly mm. is do a comprehensive security audit to know whether we have what we need to be able to secure ourselves or whether the protocols we are using for security is enough. And more than likely, it will lead to coming up with a framework of knowing how we can do community policing, state policing when we want to, and federal policing so that they can all work in sync like we find in other countries. Mm -hmm. I think it's also of the opinion that by the time we have the conversation around restructuring and we devolve more power to the state so that they can do more for their people and deliver more value there, I think it's of the opinion that it will help us to create a bigger base of people who are committed to a unified and prosperous Nigeria. And if people are busy doing something productive with their own life, they have little energy for the restiveness that we are seeing. I think we believe that if we answer those questions around restructuring in a way that a greater number of Nigerians can believe and feel that they are safe, mm. then we will have less of these tensions. Atiku believes that as president, if you sit on the chair, recognizing that flowing through you and flowing out of you is the responsibility to make all Nigerians feel involved, that you are not supposed to be doing percentiles, where you are saying some people will get more than... Mm, mm. Once you are making sure that everybody is represented, we created the business of getting all part of Nigeria to be involved as a result of civil war so that all Nigerians can be involved in it, like federal character and all of that. They were all things created to keep us together and make all of us believe in it, mm. so that every man can find some of his brother in what we are doing. We need to insist that that be the way. Over and above that, I think we believe that if you create more wealth and you create more, you enable more work or uh, jobs to be created for the people, I think we believe that if they can see value, that they will protect it. Atiku believes that if government will sit down every day solving the problem of the Nigerian people in job creation, in opening up the economy, in security, in getting it united, in using the instrument of communications available to government to embark on a comprehensive reorientation and reimagining of the entire country. I think who believes that Nigerians are not the worst criminals in the world. All right, that they will not me. break their country All right. if their country is working for them. Vincent, good morning. Hello, Vincent. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Please turn down the volume of your TV set completely. Okay, let me see from TV set. Can you hear me? Yeah, better. Go ahead with your contribution, Vincent. Uh, I'm calling in the record of uh, your issue, eh? Yeah. Yeah. The thing with uh, the country at the moment is that uh, uh, this is the only hope we are having now. Because we are already in a third system. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. The thing with that crash again, it's not just about the dream crash. It's about the Nigerian dream crash. The ones that have been doing, the probably could have been for the traffic change. But now, Nigerians need needs him more. Hello? Yeah, we're with you. Go ahead. Yeah, Nigeria is needing him more now. Mm. He, why Nigeria is that he has all it takes 
to deliver the country from the mess and quagmire the APC and government has put us into. So I think uh, uh, consider giving him a chance to take this country to a better height. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vincent. Atiku is the man to, to beat. That's coming from Vincent. But let's, let's take it a step further. Now, there is this issue about his ability to be able to visit the U.S., in and out of the U.S., and all of that. Now, when will Atiku visit the U.S.? That's not a, that's not a yastic for you to be a president. Thank and you. All that. But Nigerians would like to know, when will he be visiting the U.S.? Anytime he makes up his mind, he will go. Don't you understand? I'm now, I'm sitting there in Nigeria now. Mm. I'm, I'm the spokesman of Atiku. Mm. If somebody should ask me tomorrow that, Shabu, when would you visit to, when would you visit to America? I will tell you whenever I make up my mind. Hmm. If I make up my mind to go, I will go. If I'm sitting down here and I'm enjoying your company, we are solving the work of the Nigerian people, hmm. we will stay here and do our work. Look, and I need you to understand and tell your colleagues in the media, hmm. we do not have a blanket absence of information on how the tribes and the nations evolved. We have a history of how mankind that we know self evolved. And we did not have it saying that Africa is a, an appendage of another country. No. Or another continent. No. Nigeria is the most populous black nation in the world. Our major responsibility right now, more than even visiting anybody's country, is to fix our country for ourselves. When we fix our country, we, people will visit us, we will visit them. Mm. Look at the last 30 years. Can you imagine that we didn't even realize that Dubai and Abu Dhabi, they were fixing their country. It was when they fixed their country Hello. that we all started Hello. going there. The responsibility before us now, yeah. more than any visitor to anybody's country, is Hello. to Good fix morning. our own country. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, what's your name and where are you calling us from, please? My name is Faith. All right, Faith, go ahead. Even though we can okay. barely hear you, we we'll use Faith to hear you today. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, you are coming up. Go ahead. I want to say that the, the topic is not well chosen because Atiku has never been a presidential candidate in this country. The question of whether his dream match again. He has attended several. Okay, go ahead. He dreamed it mm. and had been just uh, nominated a platform to contest. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that presenter should find substance in his presentation for God's sake. The, you know, the, the, the authority and the considered uh, authority and the, and the head of uh, terms of affairs will not be his own candidate a ticket. Uh -huh. We need to be systematized in all what we say and how we say it. If, if Buhari has 150 cows and decides to give us whatever extra there is at certain time, that is his headache. If he gets, he can give us all of the 150 cows, then what? If he gives us a lot of money, that he was entitled to as the former head of state back to the government because he felt the money was not for as NBA members also do the same. They're earning over one million naira per month. And the same people that ran down this that wanted to run it down and God did not allow them are the ones that Atikui is now calling around making friends with so that they can pass the budget after eight months. And, and, and make the country laugh. How come there is no more full enhancement since people was asked to come and contest in PDP? So if you have money, use it of course, because there is a deal of judgment. This video we are watching and TV and so on is just a lesson for the general that, that nothing we do that is not on record waiting for us. There is no violence in God's record. There is no corruption. So we should know what we say with our mouth, what we, what we do with our hands. And somebody who is aspiring to be a president, be reminded to pay tax that he has been, he has been accumulated. He is responsible for paying tax. Where are his employees? Dangote uh, uh, has companies. Everybody knows the whole world over. We see his employees. Where are the employees of it? What money did he get before he went to custom? He went to, he became vice president. Go to Yola and find out from his people. This is what we're experiencing today. They've been experiencing it way back when Atiku was vice president. Common pub, they couldn't get to get gifts to their children to drink. Some kids of who are we deceiving? If you want to say something, just say this is what you hope to achieve. But don't run down any other person. Because here in the country, we knew how much mess 
the same PDP created in sixteen years mm. that is now being wiped up, cleaned up, and they cannot appreciate anything out of that. Then we are not being realistic with ourselves. If we want to go back to ground zero, I think we will now go to minus zero this time around. Mm. So we should be very careful mm. and care of God and have our conscience mm -hmm. be taken to us, not sentiments and money. All right, Faith, thank you very much for stopping by. Even though from your comments, um, it appears to me as if you are not actually calling from Yola, but that's fine. Let me thank Faith. Faith, thank you very much. This is the beauty of democracy. Every man with his own. Faith wants Nigerians to stay where they are and die so that the Eldorado that she wants them to meet in heaven, they can meet it after they are dead. It's okay, Faith. We hold the view that we have not pretended not to be for Atiku. Mm. And therefore, we are saying he will do better, and a lot of the callers have said they will also do better. So, faith, we are still very good friends. I still have faith in you, mm. but I have bigger faith in an Atiku presidency. All right, for the want of time, uh, we want you to tell Nigerians exactly how um, Atiku is going to transform this country <laughs> if he emerges the, the president in 2019. In what a, are those things that he's going to in do? In a couple of days' time, yeah. We are going to unveil our policy document. And from that unveiling, which is going to be public, Nigerians are going to be given enough information as to what we want to do sector by sector. And you are Nigerians are going to be proud and Nigerians are going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Look, we are younger. We are also eager to see that Nigeria is stabilized and younger people can come in charge of the country. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we really did not believe that Atiku has something significantly different to offer, there is no reason for us to be pushing so hard for him. Mm. The other thing is that Nigerians also have to know, including faith, especially faith, that in the build-up to 2015, maybe faith has forgotten the amount of hope that was in the air because of the Buhari presidency and how Nigerians had a great expectation of change. They chose those words for them. So, if after three and a half or three years, almost four years now, Nigerians are feeling this uncomfortable, then it means that something has not gone well. And you can, your excuse cannot always be where you took the country from. Because right here on this program, I've tried to take Nigerians back to where Nigeria was in 1999. Sure. Could we, could PDP have come in 1999 and be screaming every day, eh, they did this, they did that, they did this, and not fix the country? The business of government is to continually improve on the process. And every four years, people are going to come forward with alternative ideas, with a different viewpoint, to say, this is what we want to do. Mm. It is the responsibility of those that want to campaign to present their own ideas. Mm. I'm not in a position to be coming up with what they want to do. In fact, I've been looking for it. I can't find. The other day, I was on air with, with, uh, with, with Festus Kayam, one of their communication persons. Mm. A simple question was asked. What are you people going to say to Nigerians so that they can vote for you? He went completely off track, running riots in the wrong direction. I was asked the same question. I explained. Atiku will create jobs because he knows how to. And he will make job creation the central policy of his government mm. so that young people can get jobs and all that. Atiku will open up the economy so that we can expand the growth of the economy and begin to grow, maybe from maybe about 6% GDP until eventually by the grace of God and the cooperation of everybody, we get to double digit growth. We've done it before, we can do it again. Article will unite the country. We will move it away from a system where people are thinking they cannot feel part of the country. Mm. We we'll get everybody involved. We'll, we'll be true to restructuring. We'll face restructuring. Article will do will review security. I also said, because he has experience with managing of the borders via custom, and that the movement of arms in and out and some of the illegal movement of people is one of the major reasons around the country, and that he will do that. I also added that he will also sign up to an idea of Nigerians being registered to biometric uh, capturing of their data that is also to a verifiable address so that you can really know where, who is where and what is what. I also said he's going to review the security architecture of the country with a view to create a framework for those who want to do community policy, how do you do it? For those who want to do state policy, how do you do it? How does all of that be tailed into the federal police like you find in other countries of the world? That's what we are bringing to the table. And in a couple of days when we unveil the policy document, more will be said. I would like to hear yeah. what they want to say, other than this, their blame or their emotional narrative or the request for pity. 
when they've been given an assignment that they failed on. Right. Let's come together and get Nigeria working again. All right. It's going to be a new day. Let's have a peaceful election. Let's have a fair election. Let's have an election where everybody can know that whoever won won. If we win, I'll be happy. If the other side win, I'll say, okay, that means this is what Nigerians want. But we cannot insist that in a democracy, the other side will not have the right to push his own agenda and push his narrative. That I will not be part well, of. Very quickly, two things before you leave uh, the studio. What is good about this government? Let me tell you what I think honestly and genuinely is good about this government. I think the only thing that I can easily give them is, the, is Buhari himself. Unfortunately for him, he has been entrapped by people who have made a mess of his vision. So sometimes when I look at His Excellency, the President of the country now, Buhari, I always feel a lot of you know, pain that, ah, oh, 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 I wish, I wish, but it is as it is. Mm. I didn't form his cabinet for him. He's been in government now for close to four years. He has not even been able to rejig his own cabinet. Mm. Is that realistic? Is that to suggest that the best hands in the country are the ones that are there now? Can you work for Buhari? I can work for my country. I can work for my country and I work for my country. But what is on the table now is that we are now at the point where everybody is running to go and be, to push his candidate into the villa. And I think that His Excellency, the former president, the present president, sorry, if I were him or I was really close to him, I would have taken the Mandela option. Nelson Mandela sat in prison for a couple of years and then he got released. And when he was released, he did a term and he brought some younger people there. I would have imagined that if His Excellency, and now you're asking me this just as a good patriotic Nigerian and one of his citizens, I would have expected that, having seen the trajectory, that I would have probably propped up someone like Nasir Erufai and propped him up and probably tell him, okay, young man, come and take over now. I will be supporting you and all that. Because there is a certain amount of energy you need to even run the country. And if not Nasir, they can find somebody else. And I'm just using Nasir as an example. But when leaders insist that in spite of the frailty of their own nerves, in spite of their, the toll on their own health, in spite of the age, in spite of the inability to be as active as they once were, and in spite of their own comment upon winning that, oh, how they wish they had been president when they were much younger, when they now insist that all of that will no longer matter, and that if they will allow themselves to be trapped by some politician and pushed again to go and be struggling for them, when they could have easily used the opportunity to do succession planning, mm. you get, you, your guess is as good as mine. I put it straight up to you, uh, Shago Shawumi. If you are given the opportunity, will you work for President Bari? What do you mean if I'm given the opportunity? I'm working for Atiku now. I am the spokesperson of Atiku. If you are asking me whether I want to jump ship, mm. why would I? The product I hold in my hand is Excellency Atiku Abaka. The, from a personal point of view, what I had always said to myself is that God let Atiku become the presidential candidate of one of the big parties, PDP, mm -hmm. so he can rescue PDP first. And if His Excellency decides to contest, we can then have a political engagement that makes Nigeria more matured. In which case, the fact that Labour Party is contesting does not mean conservatives are not. The fact that, uh, what they call them, uh, Republican is contesting does not mean Democrats are not contesting. For me, from an ideological viewpoint, that was what I was looking for. And I knew that once Atiku was the candidate, and if His Excellency President Buhari is the candidate, I knew that we will not be able to look well and ask ourselves, okay, which one do we want to tilt towards? Do you get? Forget about what we are all saying to ourselves. As individuals, we have a right to sit down and say, who is trying to create the Nigeria of my dream for myself and my children? And vote for him. And if all we do with the 2019 election and the build up to it is one, reduce the narrative to issues and stop calling everybody all sort of funny names and stop making everybody's life difficult because when you start to shame people, you actually make their life because you just don't know. If we stick to issues and stop shaming the whole country, if we expose the issues and ask the questions, if the journalists get more investigative and help us to ask the question, then we would have given Nigerians the opportunities to choose. One is talking about restructuring. One doesn't know what his position is on restructuring. One is talking about creating jobs. Clearly, you know the statistics say we're losing jobs. One is saying, let us open up the economy. I don't know what kind of system the other one is running. You see, nations are run on ideological principles. These ideological principles 
One is not always better than the other. Because we have nations that are running monarchical systems that are doing well. I just told you Abu Dhabi. Mm. And we have nations that are in democracies and are struggling. We have nations that are running capitalism, socialism or some sort like that, like China, they are doing well. And we have capitalist economies that are doing well, like in some of these Scandinavian countries. But nations in an election, every election cycle, must ask themselves critical questions around how do they want to be served going forward. All right, finally, finally, and this is finally, there is a call that the Dubai meeting held by Atiku and his cohort should be probed. What's your take on that? In two minutes. No, let me answer that question properly. <laughs> <laughs> Atiku did not wake up in the morning mm. hoping to have a, 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 a Dubai meeting. Let me put that on record. Okay. Atiku, after he had, because we, we grew him a lot, we didn't spare him during the campaigns mm. for the primary. He had to visit every state and every local, you know, stuff like that. So we felt that, okay, before he comes and starts jumping into another round of punishment or going from here to here, let him rest a bit. He merely went to a location that he was already used to going to, to go and rest and chill a little bit naturally, if you know anything about leadership, once the person that is getting the goodwill of the people moves and is on holiday or he wants to rest for a few days or even clear his thought and get himself ready for the rigors of campaign, mm. it is like honey and bees. They are going to swarm there. And a presidential candidate that wants to be accessible and wants to listen to people, no matter what, will try as much as possible to make himself available to them. And what you saw there was people going there to offer ideas, some of them going to congratulate him, some of them going to lobby, some of them going to make suggestions, some of them going to say, ah, sir, this is, this is, that's all that happened. There is no evidence, and they can never find any evidence that anything on Ontoward took place there, or anything on Nigeria took place there, or anything even resembling anything bad took place there. In fact, at the time I was asking him, Excellency, I didn't let you rest. Because that's the way it is. And even if it comes back to Nigeria, when it does come, I think it's an Umrah now, mm. if it comes back to Nigeria, mm. you are going to find out that his house again is going to become a beehive. Mm. It's the nature of a political movement that the time has come. You have opened up your lines. I don't know those colors. You can do an audit of the course for yourself. You can see that there's a grand swell in Nigeria. Everybody is talking about Atiku. Atiku now has become a golden fish that has no hiding place. And it's nothing other than that. Anybody who says otherwise is just being silly. When the president was, on, was sick and he was in London, mm. didn't they go and visit him? <laughs> the problem with this, my, our opponent, is hypocrisy. There are things that they will just leave unsaid so that their hypocrisy will not come into public space. But they will be the one that will go and be cutting people to tell them how hypocritical they've been. Mm. It is hypocritical to imagine that the presidential candidate of one of the biggest parties in Africa, mm. the PDP, we will go on holiday and stand two, three days there, and people will come and visit him. It's not possible. All right, Shegun Shoumi, the spokesman of the Atiku campaign organization uh, for the 2019 general election. Thank you so very much for gracing our studio today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. The next time you'll be here, you'll be here with Lai Mohamed. I promise. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> How are you going to make us do? We don't bet ourselves. <laughs> I'll be in the middle. All right. That'll be a pleasure.